welcome you back and it's another episode of diary of a professional um we are here and it's just you know we're just happy to see you and we just want to go and reintroduce ourselves so i am lou in case y'all forgot i'm ashley and I am D. So today we have a special guest with us, yes. Alexandra Watson. And I'm going to give you guys a little overview of all the amazing things uh, that she is and has done. So Alexandra Watson is a published fiction writer, essayist, and poet whose work is concerned with race, class, addiction, and mental health. She is the executive director and co-founder of Apogee Journal, a publication providing a platform for underrepresented artists and writers. Her fiction, poetry, and interviews have appeared in The Common, The Bennington Review, The Rumpus, Yes Poetry, Nat Brute, Redivider, Pank, mm. Lit Hub, just to name a few. Uh, she's the recipient of the Penora Majid Prize for Literary Magazine Editing and has received grants from the New York State Council of the Arts and the Lower Manhattan Cultural Council for Community Arts Programming. My God, Get it. she just also <laughs> happens to be one of my dearest and closest friends. Uh, welcome to D.O.P. Thank you. Yay. Thanks for having me. This Thanks is awesome. Thanks for being here. I love yay, the show. Yay, yay. I'm a huge fan. Yay! I am inspired and I'm excited. Aw, amazing. Well, listen, before we get started, we'll do our normal bit. Let's go through. Let's share some moments of gratitude of our week. Um, I'll share first. So... My sister-in-law's mother um, was in a pretty bad health state. So that was a bit of a challenge for the week, but I'm super grateful. She's making a comeback yes. and she's looking good. Oh goodness, so that's amazing. yes, God. Um, so that was my little moment of gratitude there. Just feeling good uh, that, you know, we get to keep her for a little bit longer. It wasn't her time. Yes. It wasn't her time. Exactly. And I'm very happy about that. All right. So let's share. Asha, Mar, we'll leave Alex for last because yes. she's our special guest. Um, Specials I guess for last. My gratitude, I guess, just I've been working a lot and I've just been seeing a lot of different situations, um, living situations, and I'm just grateful to have a stability now in my life and I mm. um, feel for those people who are in a space that is kind of funky right now so I'm mm -hmm. grateful I have you know jumped that and now have some stability so I'm definitely yeah. grateful for that that made me feel grateful this week oof mm -hmm. amazing yeah. there is nothing like feeling that space yeah yeah indeed mm. yeah hallelujah yes um for me it's been a great boring week i was fortunate between all the snowstorms like i happened to be off and like i'm already a homebody but the fact that i didn't have to be out there driving in the snow i didn't have to <laughs> shovel nothing mm -hmm. just under my mm -hmm. covers me and my netflix like i was just like mm -hmm. i'm good i'll come out you know in the summertime that's fine <laughs> i'll just hide yeah, it out right here we can wait it out we can wait it out you know can I tell y'all, I was really struggling in the snow. I was struggling. <laughs> I was like just shoveling my car out. Thank goodness some random man felt pity on me, helped me. <laughs> I bet you he was Bless watching for a while to Bless see how him. he was doing. He was like, come here, miss. Come, come here, miss. Like, let me, let me help you. I'm like shoveling to get a parking spot to work, shoveling mm -hmm. to get out of my parking mm -hmm. spot from work, shoveling to get a parking oh, spot no. back to no, my... No, 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 I'm no, just... No. Uh, I'm... Yeah, I feel I like wanted a day off. Oh. Hearing your that it's just too much. It's just too much. <laughs> I wanted a day off the next day just because I was so exhausted from shoveling. It's a workout and a half. You your <laughs> muscles, you like you work yeah. out different things. And I if you start, so it's a whole body workout. And whole if you body, start lifting the, the, the snow and the shovel wrong, mm. 
Mm-hmm. This is your whole back. You can no, get hurt so easily. You gotta bend at the knees. For <laughs> like, days. Bend at the- yes. <laughs> bend at, at the, the knees. knees. No, it's crucial. You have to bend at the knees. Don't and then if you really. if you wait too long, then it starts to get like melting and heavy, oh, yes. like yes. extra. That yes. icy. You ice pack. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. Nah. This yeah. is why I don't Then you gotta start like cars. No, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. You're like a mass murderer at this point. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. You have to like... No, God. This is practice for something. I don't know what. But G-O-D has to I don't be, know. You know. I'm good. Giving you practice for something. I'm good. I don't know. It's not something good. It's not, no, no. not something good. No. I think of Kanye's West um, Flashing Lights music video Ooh. in the end. So that's how morbid I think. But right, right, right. <laughs> like, right, right, right. God. Oh, God. I think of J. Cole and, and Miguel. That He was digging Ooh. at the end, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, yeah, I don't deep. watch enough music videos. <laughs> they don't, do they even make them anymore, to be honest? They do, they do. Oh, do they? they? Do. Cardi's they do, uh, video. Bro. Anyone see that? Uh, Who? Cardi's new Which video? No. I didn't get to see the new video yet. Yeah. I'm like, it's no, take. is it popping? Yeah. Yeah, oh, we got, we you look like you really feeling out. okay. Was it? Was it? Watching. Listen, Alex <laughs> be fucking with this shit heavy. Okay, she be out here talking about. Let's listen to some Doja Cat. Right. Oh, let's listen to this. My old ass, I'd be like, oh, I've never heard this before. Dallas, <laughs> Dallas, she's in wow, her, she's in her suit, but she got the Cardi in the bag. <laughs> <laughs> it's teaching 18 year olds they keep me fresh right this is enough. true they keep you young I don't yeah, know I still I have them roll my create... tongue like that oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh <laughs> see you yeah, like that like that mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm <laughs> Oh, now you're showing now. I'm going to I am. I'm showing off a little bit. Yes. But let's see, Alex. Yes. yes. Talk to us. What's your moment of gratitude this week? Okay. So last week, the week before, actually, uh, my mom had surgery to get her hip replaced. She had. Mm. She needed the total hip replacement. And I was up in Syracuse, which is where I grew up, which is why I really feel the shoveling because it's really intense really wild there (laughs) um and i was kind of overwhelmed i guess with helping and doing my work at the same time and i was on this phone call with so i'm doing this project trying to curate work from incarcerated writers and Mm. in partnership with um, an incarcerated writer at San Quentin in California. Mm. And he's from Brooklyn. And he was like, oh, and I told him, like, I'm in, you know, I'm in my hometown helping care for my mom. And he's like, oh, I wish I had those problems. Mm. And I was like, oh, Mm. yeah, like being able to actually be free and care for somebody else is actually a privilege a luxury yeah yeah Yeah. Yeah, it's a luxury and that made me realize i actually felt grateful to be able Mm. to be there and even you know being working remotely the fact that i could actually be present you know be go somewhere else and take two weeks off of you know being where Mm. i am to be with my mom so that's my gratitude which was like a journey because i was at first feeling like a little selfish you know yeah, it yeah, happens. yeah, yeah. It happens. It's tough. Yeah. It's tough. But how's she doing? She's doing great. She's doing great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Amazing. So, oh, she's, she's really such good like, news. Yeah. You know. Well, amazing shares, y'all. Yeah. With that, Alex, we're gonna put you on spotlight. Hey. So to okay, start, already. <laughs> uh, before we have her read one of her amazing works, um, which speaks on topics that I think will be. Um, very relevant to our viewers, to you guys. Um, I want to understand a little bit more about how you became a writer, right? So um, when was the moment where you found your voice? I feel like as a woman, and especially as a woman of color, finding our voice, especially in writing, um, I feel like can be quite challenging, or I see that it's a challenging act, at least for me, it is. I still struggle a lot finding my voice in writing. Um, and kind of self, you know, that self-conscious, um, like little voice behind my head. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, how did you overcome that? When did you say, you know, I'm a writer and I want to chat about these super powerful topics? 
Yeah, I, I think I still have trouble actually identifying as a writer. You know, Ooh. my day job is teaching. And then after teaching, I feel like editing, then writing. <laughs> because, well, for one thing, it's something I haven't really made money doing. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's mm-hmm. part of because I teach writing, it's sort of part of my living, but at the same time, not directly how I make a living. So mm-hmm. that's one part of it. And then also, I think I just feel like that self consciousness around what it means to actually label yourself as a writer persists even for published writers, you know? Mm. But I think I can go back as far as sixth grade. <laughs> <laughs> to talk about Ooh, my writing that's an journey. early start. Yeah, yeah. because nice. it, there's a distinct moment that I remember when there was this group of women who came in to my school. There was some kind of special program that they were doing. Sister Friends, they were called. And oh, that's a they great, came, that's yeah, a great like name. <laughs> yeah, so they came for a week and every day had like an hour poetry writing workshop I guess Mm. and at the end of the week they had us come and perform our poems for the whole class the whole sixth grade class and I performed my poem and it was super corny (laughs) (laughs) I still remember the last line was like so it was like my life like all the poems were my life you know my life is like that was the whole (laughs) Thing. And then mine at the end was like, my life is like nothing I can explain, but honey, I'm trying. I don't know where that was coming from, but somehow these sister friends gave me some kind of magic. inspiration. That yeah, push, love that's it. amazing. And they just really support, you know, took time to tell me how much they really felt affected by my poem, you know? They were really generous with, you know, I I mean, you have to be with kids, obviously, Mm -hmm. but they seem to give me, like, special attention and affirmation. And I think think that that made me take poetry more seriously because I think Mm -hmm. I was like, I would write my little songs and stuff. Oh, funny story about that. This is funny to me, I guess. Um, like, I, w- I was writing songs, and I was like, um, I wrote one that was like, I know you just got laid, and I thought it meant laid off. I thought laid <laughs> meant laid off. <laughs> oh, no. And I was, like, I was like singing it in my car, and my mom was like, oh, Alex, where did you get that song? And I'm like, oh, it's just a song that I heard on the radio, but it was really like a song that I wrote. So I know you just got laid. I love it. I cannot. I love that it. Is too freaking good. But I love that you said this because, you know, we underestimate the power that people have as, you know, and uh, you know, the comments or, you know, the the guidance that people have on each other right um so you know having that network and community and just people that care um especially for our young ones you know it's so critical to get them to you know whatever it is that they're meant to do you know to spark that to give them that push to see themselves as that right because identity is you know that identity that we give ourselves is really what drives us into you know our phases of life so i'm i'm really glad you brought that up that's pretty brilliant yeah i think it really does take some nurturing mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. yeah to gain um, that confidence you need somebody to be like hey you're really you know you're really good at this you know work on it mm-hmm. um and you, that exposure yeah and especially right? when it's the exposure when it's something that's not norm or traditional and it's like in that creative space because every it's like everything is cookie cutter so it's like oh no there's something that there's there and it's not the typical path but it it's probably your path and you can really flourish in it if you just you know someone helps plant those seeds and water it so exactly yeah so i think i really treated writing as an outlet usually for either pain or anger (laughs) oh and that's a great segue there yeah so like 
Yeah. <laughs> um, teen angst. So yeah, for sure. You know, you talk a lot. Um, you know about race, class, addiction, and mental health, right? Mm-hmm. Like those are the subject matters that you focus on. Um, when did you decide, or how did that come about that these are the topics that hmm. you know became critical for you to to put out into the world? Um, what's the story behind that? Yeah, I think again, even I, I mean, I wouldn't have said <laughs> when I was in high school that these are topics that I'm interested in. Like, I wouldn't have been able to classify or categorize. But I do think even as early as like. 11, 12th grade, I was Mm -hmm. thinking about these topics. Um, And just because of personal experience, just because of my family and what I was going through. And I, you know, there was a literary magazine at my high school that I published poems in. And I just, at some point, I guess, decided like, I'm just gonna talk about real shit. Like, I don't, I'm not trying to get into college with these poems or something. You know, yeah, mm-hmm. like yeah. they were poems that came out because I needed to process something. And then I was like, oh, well, the things that feel closest to my heart are usually the things that other people do respond to. <clears throat> so I had this poem called Hands that was about like my brother was in jail at the time. He has, he has mental illness and he was um, and it was just about like his hands. He has these like um, he has he gets these really dry like hands in the winter like they get Mm -hmm. all cracked and stuff and then it was about him like pounding on the walls and bars the cell and that was like the image it was all around his hands and then and I remember people like really responding to that poem and then I had another one that was about like my first time doing drugs and like how what that felt like and I was like fuck it I'm just gonna put it in my high school literary magazine um YOLO yeah and I just I mean like the thing about art is you can always be like well that's not really about me <laughs> like that's like <laughs> absolutely you know that's I like love there's it. a little I was inspired by yeah this exactly person I saw on television yeah right there's like and that so little fair, I, I was thinking the other day and I think it's because this new Britney thing is out and all that stuff but as we were growing up it was very strange like the type of things that were on tv i find like all the artists like the things that they were going through the tabloids i feel like it was a very interesting time yeah. period you know like the paris hilton's the like oh you know like that time that's, space. that's not reality the tv and people's lives yeah, were like yeah. the subject <laughs> as opposed to what they're putting out yeah. yeah correct correct yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah i don't know that kind of sparked that 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 little idea there but yeah 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 it's part of the times and then i think as time has gone on those are just the themes that come up most often in my life you know so then mm-hmm. they end up coming out art reflects in life. the work in some way art reflects yeah. life yeah exactly yeah and art i've tried before like i went to graduate school for writing i, I got an mfa and I had so many stories that were like trying to be other people's, trying to be about something else, like trying to be about something that would sound smart or more appropriate or something, but they sucked. <laughs> <laughs> That's not you your know? voice. That's, That's not where your heart lane. is. That's not your lane. That's, exactly. Yeah. That's not where your heart is. Right. And, you know, art, it needs to be where your heart is and, and something authentic. that you think will be impactful. Yeah for others yeah and I think those topics are relevant for us and you know people you know us we need to discuss these things we need to let it out you know just that you know that purging of those feelings I think is essential yeah Mm -hmm. yeah yeah so I think that kind of move from first writing is for me you know Mm -hmm. to try to figure something out that's bothering me or that's confusing and then it's like for someone, you know, yeah. for an audience, like something that might connect yeah. for people. Um, and I think I tend to think that like when you start with a real question about your a genuine question, then you end up writing something that's more interesting for other people, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I agree. Instead I of agree. like a sense of certainty, which is why I like that. Um, that poster that you have, Doris, the, um, what is it? What is the quote? It's- Oh, uh, the Rummy quote? Yes. Um, 
It's uh, sell your cleverness and buy bewilderment. bewilderment. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Which I think is such a great, you know, I, we get so stuck on trying to be smart, trying to be yes. this, I know this, blah, blah, blah. Yes. But all that does is close our minds. Then we're not receptive. You know, you might kind of know something, but people, you know, deliver that information in different ways. They have a slightly different experience or, you know, it manifested in a slightly different way and you gain some new information, you know, so... I love that quote. Thanks yeah. for bringing that up. Like even your me. even word choice. Like I always see mm-hmm. my students trying to use like million dollar <laughs> SAT words or whatever, and I'm like, that doesn't even really mean what you th- like. It doesn't really even. It's not even accurate. It's not really capturing <laughs> yeah. what you're trying to say. It's just like thesaurus swap right. out. But yep. You know, I've been I there. feel like the yeah. only way you can really, I mean, for them, I'm always like, just keep reading, just read more and you will figure out like that vocabulary will naturally come it into your come. own vocabulary it and it'll mm-hmm. feel appropriate to the situations where you're using it instead of just. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> trying to impress you. 100p. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think with that, let's get into the meat and potatoes. I really want to hear your poem i want to chat about it it's so strong this is um, my first time so i'm excited i'm nervous yay yes we love you okay Okay, so um i'll read my poem um it's had different titles but the one that i've come to is one drop rule okay One drop rule. Rashida Jones is trending. I refuse to let this be the soapbox I die on. No one wants to hear how I wished I was Greek or Brazilian, jealous of my Puerto Rican friend with shorthand for her shade. When Fat Joe said the N-word, when J-Lo said the N-word, I had to ask, are Puerto Ricans black? Portal opened in my historical imagination. In DR, I was Rubia. To fit in, I straightened my hair. A blowout sweated out in four minutes, ringlets when I reached my door. In Italy, Negro with the soft E. On a boyfriend's friend's AIM profile, I can't believe he's dating a... Someone says, what are you? That someone is a man. I could tell by the shape of your ass. I start sweating teaching passing. An 18 year old asks, but how did she not know? Can you picture me? Waiting for the film with Ruth Nega. Waiting for the one with Lena Horne. Watching Imitation of Life again. I'm counting up quadroons and octoroons. I'm counting up to see do I make the cut. I'm playing with the dropper. One drop as tincture. One drop as evidence. One drop as memory. A special kind of magic. The princess Meghan Markle. Jennifer Beale's devil in a blue dress. Maureen Peel in the bluest eye. They all get what they deserve. Distant mothers, white lovers who uncover them too. I love your complexion. This skin is so boring. Pockmarks, ruts in my ears. Woo! Woo! My gosh. (laughs) All right. All right. So, I mean, that's just super impactful. I I mean, especially for me, you know, I feel that so deeply. Mm-hmm. You know, like when you wrote about um, in DR, I'm a Rubia, you know, I find, you know, my, I'm Dominican background and both of my parents are Dominican. And if I go to the Dominican Republic, they don't consider me Dominican. Like they think I'm white and it's so strange. And then I'm here and I'm not like, what am I here? So, you know, that identity, that play is so flipping interesting Mm. and Mm. such a challenge where where did you is it where did this come from is there a personal story here yeah there's a lot of personal Mm. stories but the first i mean i feel like it's probably one of my most straightforward poems in terms of like rashida jones was trending (laughs) literally people were like oh rashida jones is black and i was like I'm not going to, I'm not going to step into this. Like, I'm not going to put my foot here. Like, you know? Um, and then like, 
I feel like the no one wants to know part is like there's just been like new Dolezals popping out the wood woodwork, like new Rachel Dolezal type figures. And then like, I feel like that has sparked a really meaningful and important dialogue about colorism and like mm -hmm. um, authenticity and mm -hmm. also like in, <clears throat> in academia and also in publishing, how like the kinds of narratives that from people of color that do get published are like often from like light skinned or white passing people and like mm. and also in terms of academia like people often get prom even in like africana studies departments and stuff it often tends to be like the white passing black person who gets the promotion and stuff who feels like safer or mm -hmm. more palatable um, the pro mm -hmm. yeah and the proximity to whiteness like makes you be palatable but also like that diversity like angle candidate you know uh -huh. yeah. and so i'm like well i don't really feel like i don't always feel like adding my voice is like is like the most helpful part mm -hmm. of the conversation you know like i'd rather listen to people who have different experiences um but then I was like, but, but, but my experience is so relevant to this whole Rashida Jones thing because yeah. people, you know, mm -hmm. people consider people didn't know that she's mixed, even though like her father is this famous black man, Quincy Jones. you know, yeah. <laughs> Quincy yeah, Jones. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then it just got me thinking about like context and like in what context you're read and what in different ways. And then like. I've always felt um, kind of like, I don't know, this is more complicated now than I used to think it was, but I, I used to think that kind of like the Caribbean had like such a looser understanding, like it wasn't as strictly defined and like, mm -hmm. especially in Latin America that like mm -hmm. the idea of racial fluidity was like accepted and um understood in some way like it, it and it didn't even have to be labeled really like you could just be you could be labeled by your nationality instead of your ethnicity right mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. if you're that was why i was like oh my puerto Here. rican friend like she's puerto she's just right exactly that was here. my lens yeah, too because i'm like american super interesting yeah because like here we have that lens and then when we get to our countries, you know, for us that are, you know, first generation and then we go back and, you know, it's the 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 standard of race or like their conception of race just changes so drama dramatically so different. Like sometimes it's not even I don't know. It's just so different. The, the guidelines are different. It doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I don't want to act like I am any like I feel like hopefully the poem captures like questioning instead of like mm -hmm. I feel like I'm an authority or like I'm certain about how this plays out in different contexts I'm just speaking from my own perspective that mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. I've been raced in different ways depending on the context and like in yeah. Italy my you know my friend's grandparents were like you look European not American mm -hmm. mm. and you know I feel like in the Mediterranean, there is also racial fluidity, but that's not the way people talk about identity there. But it's true that like it's near North Africa, you know, mm -hmm. like it's near um, the Middle East. So all those people were always moving around. That's why everyone is kind of like vaguely ethnically ambiguous in that region, you know. Mm -hmm. And then I feel like similarly in parts of Latin America and the Caribbean, it's like that kind of mixing is actually now the new identity right but in the united states and this is why the whole one drop rule comes in it's like the binary is so it's almost like mm -hmm. it's almost like a religion like mm -hmm. our idea of the racial binary is so ingrained that like it's like witchcraft or something it's, it's like, like having we an believe extreme in it so right deeply. and left right now you know it's you know, we're taking that same approach, I think, with race as well, you know, just like politics, you know, it's this like one or the other, you know, kind of like that in between that melding is like non-existing. Yeah, yeah. And that's why I feel like people are so, so um, like I've just had so many people express like ex express 
confusion and mm-hmm. like doubt about mm-hmm. me like they like mm-hmm. they don't believe me when I tell them that I'm mixed a lot of the time um mm-hmm. like they'll be like no <laughs> Just smile. <laughs> like, no. Like, what do you, like, what do you mean? <laughs> no. Yeah, they're like, no, no, really? And especially, like, oh, man. So rude. And it's so yeah. rude. And they don't realize how rude it is. So it's like, rude. how are you going to tell me what I am? Right. Exactly. You know? I remember, this is just bringing wild. to mind another instance where, like, I was on a group vacation and it was in the dr and one of the uh, one someone who was on it um was like you know a very fair um cuban american and when she found when i told her that i was mixed she was like everyone we met she was like can you believe her dad's black can you believe her dad's black like look at her does she look like she could be mixed to you like I feel like there's this like weird objectification of like yeah. look and try and why to why do we discern. care so much? Too. Yeah, like we yeah. talk so much about it. It's like hmm. it's like that weird uh, <laughs> like uh, Europeans always say like Americans are so weird. The first thing we ask is what do you do? It's like it's something similar. It's like why do we even have to have this conversation constantly? Like why is it so relevant? You know, like, does it really matter? Because now you don't fit in her box. Sometimes I think about that. Whatever box she put you in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then I was like, but you're you're Cuban. Like, how do you not understand? Like, you've seen all shades of people who are of African descent. Like, how... What? Mm-hmm. How do you not understand this? Like, yeah. I don't understand. No, but, in, but she, honestly, I don't even, weird, uh, yeah. I don't even know if she realizes. Like, some people are so detached from history that they don't even know. They, don't, they know they don't have no they idea. Don't. They think have that, zero idea. They think that, that black people mixed. just like, ar- like appeared in the Caribbean or something, or that like, I don't know that, that everyone is indigenous there, but, like, to the Caribbean. Mixed? I don't know. I don't know. I, don't, I feel but like it they becomes definitely a... don't consider themselves black yeah. or they have different definitions of black yes oh, i yes. think that you know? because <laughs> of, like race ethnicity nationality and people always like conflate all of them and they're yeah. so not the same thing all and different. yeah mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's just it's just a mess that's a conversation all on its own <laughs> it is I, its own. there's a total difference between race and ethnicity and mm-hmm. so many people don't understand it. I get in yes. quite heated conversations about it, actually. Just like oh, there can be yeah. a white Cuban or an Afro Cuban or, yeah. you know, an Indio mm-hmm. or whatever, it th- different things. And I think those things change, you know, how you grew up or your culture frames mm-hmm. how you see things or how you can like, how she can't even fathom that you can look how you look and have a black yeah. father like there's not everything yeah. is on a spectrum everything mm-hmm. is on a spectrum and then there's genetics you know it's like people don't even think it's like I, listen like my grandfather was dark 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 skin and somehow some of us are super light skin but that doesn't mean that i'm not black like i have like i can then have a child and the genetics will be like he's dark skin you or make- she's dark skin like it's in there you know and it's like people don't even think about just the genetics of it all yeah you know you could just be light skin because no, that's, that's somewhere along the over line their head. all different shades over, yeah they all don't different yeah shades. it's like it's it's ridiculous it's ridiculous and you know it, it, it creates so many issues uh, you know especially like for people that grow up in environments where they're the only one or they're very few you know that you know they have a hard time accepting this as a part of who they are because of Mm -hmm. that environment and you know i've seen several people who growing up had a really hard time because they were light-skinned black and they just didn't find where to where to put themselves like what box am i in challenging it's a challenging it's a challenging Mm -hmm. topic yeah and so there's a questioning, there's the kind of anger or, or like resentment, bitterness, bitterness, bitterness is the, is probably the way I would describe like a lot of my poems. Um, definitely this one. Um, but there's also like, uh, 
trying to make more visible the fact that like we actually do know we actually mm-hmm. ha- have these narratives we have people you know this movie imitation of life that i watched in college and that kind of helped open up my own understanding you know had this mixed race character who kind of she was white passing and she um she had her mom was black and she worked for this like white actress and um she just like abandoned her mother and you know decided to live as a white woman but then you know when her mother was dying it was like this whole emotional reckoning for her Mm -hmm. um and i was like okay we have this trope kind of especially of the like tragic mulata who like (laughs) abandons her culture and race and then like something bad always happens to her because of it usually like the white man finds out (laughs) and then like she's doomed from there or like she kills herself or something like tragic happens um and that was like a trope invented by white abolitionists who were like look at these white looking babies like you can't have these white babies enslaved and so they would write these stories that had and then they would have these photographs and stuff of like really light you know people who were like their one of their arguments for why you know why abolition so it is like very limiting the whole tragic mulata trope but i also find it kind of fascinating fascinating like i want to dig into it and i almost want to like mock and make fun of it Mm. you know um, it's an is, interesting angle yeah. to have taken, yeah. you know, and and I'm sure it was very super intentional. Like one of probably the most effective narratives they could have taken to try to motivate some people towards abolition. You know what I mean? Given the environment and circumstances that they were in, you know, mm. I mean, I don't know that it was obviously I don't think I don't think it's a good tactic, but <laughs> given the space, it's like how to best convince be super racists, you know, that this shouldn't be a thing. Oh, let's tell them, but look, they 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 look this way, you know? Like mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I just feel, feel like, like the most basic way crazy. to try to get people on your side. Yeah, and it's been it was kind of also, you know, as an argument against like biological race because mm-hmm. if you can't actually look at um something like the shape of someone's head which is the way that people determined racial categories and you can't actually determine that then the whole concept the whole theory kind of starts to fall apart you know so it's also like uh i guess the hopefulness of like of this whole phenomenon is like challenging the categories to begin mm-hmm. with mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know i absolutely agree listen on that point i think that's a good point to to kind of end that conversation i'd like to give space to our people to write to us their thoughts and their challenges and kind of their experiences um with this um i think it's super relevant super powerful um, and life changing, you know, when you when you make a, a shift in, in thought when it comes to to the one drop rule, I find um, Alex, you're amazing. How can people connect with you? Mm-hmm. How can we read more of your works? How can be, we be more involved? Yeah. Of course, we will have you back again because there Please. is so much yes. to talk about. I know. I feel like we subject. just scratched the surface. We I scratched know. the surface. <laughs> and like, we, we need a second part. <laughs> yeah, we need to travel around the world and like figure out. <laughs> our I got my passport and, ready. Yeah. Figuratively. And like, do you have? <laughs> legit. Do you have like anything new, anything upcoming, anything in the um, works? Yeah, I have. Okay, so I have a poem coming out in, I don't know whether it's going to be online or just in print, but the place is called The Swamp, <laughs> The Swamp Literary <laughs> Magazine. It. And that one is about like the sugarcane industry and kind uh-huh. of like tracing sugar back to, you know, um, 
slavery as well. It's like one of those things where I can't start talking about something without like ending up talking about slavery a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. Which I also, Morgan, I should shout out the poet Morgan Parker, who um, is like a big influence of mine. And her, she's also like, okay, if you look under the surface of this thing that we deal with every day, like you're going to find this dark history, you know? Um, Anyway, so that I think I have a few Always. other poems coming out. So yeah, I'll share my website maybe and I'll try yes. to update it because I haven't yes. in a while. Yes. <laughs> the people Please, are going will... to be looking for your work, honey. <laughs> Correct. Yeah, I need we to start put I need to make sure the... I get everything up there. So it's just my full name, Alexandra Watson dot net. That's my website. And then um also Apogee, the journal, um, which is just part of what has influenced me to kind of have these conversations in a little more depth and see the need for them that like actually yeah there is room for more complex you know like white people have gotten to tell like so many different kinds of stories you know Mm -hmm. so that whole what I was talking about about my like uncertainty about whether to enter the conversation I feel like Mm -hmm. my me entering the conversation shouldn't like make it um, shouldn't take up or shouldn't like prevent someone else from being in conversation with me, you know? Hopefully, oh, I'm like yeah. bringing other people There's into the conversation. There's a limited too. space, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like you can actually make room for other people with your yeah. voice, hopefully. So, anyway, Apogee, um, that's the whole goal with Apogee, which is A P O G E E journal.org. And and just because, um, you know, people don't really know, like, the thought process behind Apogee, mm-hmm. Apogee is, like, you compi- you've compiled, like, an amazing amount of, you know, an amazing uh, group of people, and basically they, they put in their works, right? Like... Yeah, it's a literary journal, a and, and mm-hmm. it's we're on issue 15. Issue 15 will come out soon. It's online, so everyone can access it. It's all free. Um and yeah it's it just doesn't have specific themes but it does um center writers of color um it's usually people dealing with identity intersections of identity in some way in their work and it's always kind of i feel like we're on the cutting edge you know if i can be a little I can brag about you that brag, because brag, it, is, brag, it is a collaborative brag. project, so it's not just me. But, like, we are on the cutting edge often. Like, we'll publish someone, and, like, the next year they'll have their first book out or, mm. you know. So Amazing. if you follow what we're doing, you'll often kind of be on the pulse of what is up and coming. Ooh. Oh, brilliant, <laughs> Alex. Um, well, everyone, thanks this was so for good. being here with us. Thank you. Um, this was just really amazing. And we must do this again Please. with some, you know, uh, regularity for sure. We love you so, 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 so much. And thank you. Thank you. Thank yes. you. Thank you for having me. This is really great. I feel like I was able to speak some truth and yes, yeah. really, yes. really nice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh man, so with that, I mean, we don't have our glasses today, but (laughs) I will do a kiss to the queen in you. The queen in you. (laughs) Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment, leave a review. Please. Go visit Alex's page, go visit our page. All of it. All of it. All of it. Yes. Love y'all. Till next time.